there's an injustice, whether it's against you or someone you love or someone you believe in, stand up. Don't sit down. Don't sit down on them because you know, they need you. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. We are live after the Justice for Johnny Depp trial. Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard, day 13. And this one got intense. In fact, I want to give a trigger warning at the start of this show because we're just going to get unmonetized because there's no way around it, as you can tell from our headline. We can't tiptoe around this. We try to sometimes on this channel. But what we heard today, what this doctor came and did, I know a lot of us are very angry. And a lot of us just aren't buying it. We don't believe her. We didn't find her credible. Uh, and we're very, very frustrated. So today's a tough one. We're going to get through all that happened, but specifically focus really on the last, our doctor, uh, it was Dr. Hughes, right? Um, uh, yeah, so just w friendly warning in advance. I need your help, guys, to share this video because I just know YouTube is not uh, because of the subject matter. But... I set this up a while ago. We have started to get some sponsors who have believed in this show and what we're doing and our growth. And I'm so happy we actually have a sponsor today. When I warned him, hey, this is going to get demonetized, he said, no, 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 please do it. It's important. Get it out there. I'm happy to support this channel no matter the subject matter. So I got to quickly thank our first sponsor who's been sponsoring our coverage, and it's Coffee Brand Coffee. Thank you so much. CoffeeBrandCoffee.com. Quality coffee with no gimmicks, fresh roasted to order. Guys, I'm so happy to talk about this because it's by a friend of mine, Jeremy, he does a big YouTube channel called The Quartering. Uh, a lot of people have mixed thoughts on him and his channel, but I can tell you as a guy, as a friend, he's helped me tremendously behind the scenes. He helped me grow. He's a really good guy, and he wanted to make a coffee brand without the politics. He, he, it's like, I want, I want fresh coffee made to order without, what do you guys think of this politic? And what do you think about this celebrity? And what do you think about this? His whole angle is, just make me good coffee. I don't want to hear any other nonsense. He has his brand nowhere over this. It's a way to help other fellow creators, help other processors who are making the coffee to make it fresh, roasted to order to you. So I wanted to really thank him and I wanted to give you guys a chance. The mods have the link. It's also in the description. Please pick up a bag, try a bag of coffee brand coffee if you drink coffee. Uh, it serves people who are sick of the gimmicky coffee companies who offer marketing a place of truly great fresh roasted coffee. And you know what? That's something I can support. So uh, please check it out. Hand roasted to order uh, means they wait until you receive, they receive your order before they fire up the roaster. Uh, so don't wait for some product that's been on the shelf in some warehouse. Get uh, coffee brand coffee directly shipped to you because they're supporting creators like this and they're not afraid to help uh, let us talk about whatever we want to talk about and just sell their coffee no matter what the topic is. So I got to say that's a very uh, impressed with them. Thanks for helping me, uh, Coffee Brand Coffee. And uh, I want to introduce my guests as well. First up, Steph Alternerd. How excited. We're finally getting some sponsors and how excited to be oh sponsoring, uh, to be supporting <clears throat> Coffee Brand Coffee as it launches. Oh, it's it's absolutely exciting, you know, and it, and it's really nice to see YouTubers supporting other YouTubers and it being reciprocal in that way, uh, which is wonderful. I mean, reading up on this coffee brand coffee situation, I love it how he says basically that they won't talk any shiz about their customers with the New York Times and I was just like, snaps, yes. But it speaks to me in terms of like, um, because, my my degrees in international relations and security studies and I studied in the school of peace studies at university and one thing that you know he, he mentions is that you know it, it's all about sustainable business practices and environmentally friendly production so you know they make sure that everything's sustainable and fair uh, with their direct trade relationships with many of their growers uh, so it's very very like um, a personal relationship you know Know, with the small farms and the co-ops that they've got it kind of speaks to mind for all my uk representatives out there uh, fair trade it seems to be like the u.s version of that which i'm all for um they they make sure you know that the producers are very very concerned in terms of the environment so that's your soil prevention clean water practices uh, maintaining a quality standard of living for their workers because it's not just about the produce it's about the workers behind them as well they want to take care of the produce and the workers as well which i think is just absolutely just 
commendable uh, when you've got all these uh, big coffee places that don't give an absolute shiz <laughs> nope. about their farmers, <laughs> the small farms, exactly. the co-ops or anything like that. You've got a big, massive YouTuber, Jeremy the Quartering, that's coming in and saying, you know what, I'm going to be freaking rewriting the game here, uh, coffee makers. I'm going to come in with my size nines and I'm going to show you how to ethically do it right um so yeah absolutely it just feels like to me now when i take a drink of that coffee feels like there's a little bit of a warm hug in my gob knowing that the <laughs> and farmers it is, behind it is the produce <laughs> is, is being looked after i'm sorry well, it is, it's, it's a warm true. hug because look I, I we're trying to get some sponsors to help and thank you for bearing with our sponsors we're going to tell you companies we like that are supporting us and this channel and our coverage because when you support them you're supporting us and i'm really just grateful for him stepping up and especially on a video like this it's such a serious topic and it's not we're not going to get any money off this video which is not what it's about it's just, it's nice to have support so you don't have to worry. You know what I mean, Steph? And so I'm really grateful for him for helping us have this talk, still supporting it. So guys, one more time, check out Coffee Brand Coffee. The link's being shared by the mods. I appreciate him. Appreciate you guys. All right. Now, uh, back to the topic and back to today's coverage. We are in day 13. We have Steph the Alternate. It's Kim is here. And we have an amazing panel. Alexandra DeFrank is here, uh, therapist, mm. as well as uh, attorney at law, Christopher Melcher. Uh, now, you guys all got to watch this today's uh, coverage. The, the first half of the day was a, a, not as eventful as what clearly I, I thought was the most eventful and shocking was when the defense rested. I'm sorry, the plaintiffs rested and the defense begun. There was one moment in the middle where it got very heated and we were, I think, all on the edge of our seats. Yes, Steph, where they were doing this motion to end the case. Christopher, and even I was texting you because I was getting nervous because you told me it was nothing. But during this 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 exchange, <laughs> oh, my God, I, do we have a moment of that? Should I play that, Kim, or can we sum it up? Do we, I, I think it's this one. Yeah, the yeah. We'll let play it. Your Honor, if I could finish my argument, I mean, I, I, I would appreciate it. I, I, I can't wait the, to oppose this. I, 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 I can't wait. Go ahead. The, <laughs> go ahead. So, and, and again, uh, we can. The court should deny defendant Amber Heard's motion to strike because Mr. Depp has come forward in his case in chief with multiple credible witnesses, documents, and authentic tape recordings of Ms. Heard herself, not only satisfying all of the requisite elements of his claim for defamation, including actual malice, but also going the extra mile of showing that Ms. Heard physically abused him. She's the abuse. Well, it sounds way, way weirder with the bleeps. <laughs> <laughs> it's like on uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, uh, we can say it now. We believe it's abused him. The of the testimony of witnesses are solely matters for the jury. The jury may accept that part of the testimony it believes and reject that which it does not. It is also within the exclusive province of the jury to draw any reasonable inferences from the evidence before it. Do you agree that the only evidence before that we've heard in this trial, uh, as far as the title of the op-ed, is that even Mr. Darby, I, I believe, testified to it that it was something that Washington Post wrote? Well, for the, for the one that, online. That, he's not our witness, Your Honor. That's a, a witness from the ACLU. Well, I understand, but it's the only evidence I have. I respectfully okay. disagree, Your Honor. All what, right. What the only real evidence Your Honor has is Plaintiff's Exhibit 1, which is Amber Heard putting her name on the entire article, including the title. That is the only evidence before you. The ACLU was a co-conspirator with Ms. Heard, and whether they say, oh, maybe the Washington Post wrote it, that's not the end of the story. All she has done is create an issue of, uh, an issue of fact as to whether she wrote the title or not. So you're, but, you're saying just having that exhibit in evidence is absolutely. enough? Absolutely. Absolutely, Your Honor. Her name is on the article. Okay. What what does an average reader expect? So that alone is sufficient to beat a motion to strike. If they want to come back later I love this and part. say, gee, she didn't write the title, as if that were a defense, I, I hope they make that <laughs> argument. I hope they make that argument to the jury, because it's about as credible as her, as her argument that, oh, I wasn't referring to, to Johnny Depp. She didn't have to. And the testimony of Terrence Doherty was very clear that when they took out the references to Johnny Depp, no one was interested in this article Ooh. anymore. So she said, put it back in, put it back in, make it more spicy that, so people like would read. Otherwise, she couldn't get it in the Washington Post. It would be back in Teenage Vogue, which is the other publication that was considering publishing it, because no one was interested in what she had to say in which, in, in, unless she was defaming Mr. Depp. All right, so it goes on for, he went on for 30 minutes, Christopher, and it felt like he was giving away a lot of his sort of angles. Uh, do you feel like he needed to go that far? 
Well, you never know. I mean, th there there have been these cases uh, or have been cases where motions like that have been granted. So um, he didn't want to take the chance. You know, he, he was uh, a little, I think, maybe overly animated with with the court and cutting the court off. But, you know, hey, he had to make the argument. And, and it's it's kind of a test run for his closing because this was outside the presence of the jury. So sometimes, it you know, it's kind of helpful to do a dry run. <clears throat> You lose Andy? your audio. I think you lost your audio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was coughing and then I muted. I also, I want to make sure we, you guys know our awesome new shirts are in. I thought, perfect day to debut it because after today, I, I still I still believe it. Um, but thank you uh, uh, to Brian who put this in the store. Um, all right. So let's get to uh, D Dr. Hughes. Um, uh, this is now the defense rested. The defense, or sorry, the plaintiffs rested. They won. The judge said, you know, the, the motion, the judge is like, nope, there's enough here for the jury to make a decision out of. There was question about a tweet, but she hadn't received the tweet, so it's still on the table. Uh, but Dr. Hughes, which we knew, got leaked to the press. Christopher, who do you think leaked that to the press? Who tells, who's telling Deadline that, oh, we're changing our order and the doctor's coming? Is that something that Johnny? Hold on, here's a question. Alexandra, do you feel Dr. Hughes was being extremely biased with her using she slash her with victim and he slash him with abuser? Christopher, do you think you will cross R or will they have Vasquez do it? And what do you think the approach will be? Fiery or calm? Okay, we're going to answer all of that. Uh, so thank you, amazing, for your support of Ventures in Larland. Uh, but who do you think leaked it? Before I get to those questions, do, does that, do you think Amber's team is telling them? Oh, Andy, your audio's gone low. It's low. Can you hear me now? Who do you think is yeah. leaking that uh, information to get the, uh, the uh, with a witness list a deadline? So very well, low, Andy. Uh, yeah, while you're fixing the audio, I mean that's the the only possible source for the leak is is the counsel who's calling the witness. So, <clears throat> you know, they're they're giving that information over, and and again that that's. Um, that information should be shared with the other side, uh, uh, you know, usually 24 hours or more in advance. Typically, the, the trial teams will exchange or confirm who they're going to call as witnesses so the other side can compare, uh, prepare for that. And that's just a common courtesy that's done for both sides. So, you know, whatever. I mean, it might have been exchanged to Johnny's side and leaked by Johnny's side. It, you know, we just don't know. Uh, hopefully you can hear me better. Can you still hear me? Is that better? I don't know. I'll have to get Ooh, louder. Hello. I don't know why I'm, it's everything's up. I can't max it any further. Uh, it, it sometimes goes That's up and better. down. Uh, let's ask what the what the chat just asked. Uh, uh, we'll get to you, Alexander, because we're gonna play the clip in a second. But Christopher, do you think Chu will cross Amber, or will they have Vasquez do it? And what do you think the approach will be, fiery or calm? Now that we get that we saw all this, and there's a lot of heat, how do you expect the cross to go? Well, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know who's going to do it, but it, it should be aggressive because she uh, and we'll get into this later. But the Hughes was very flippant and defensive in her testimony. So I think uh, she's she's it's not going to take much to upset her. And really, the approach is to show her as an advocate, because even though she's hired by one side, uh, she's supposed to be neutral and she she was anything but neutral. So if you can get the witness arguing with you on the stand, then you've destroyed them. So that that would be the approach. Uh, and we can get into specifics, but um, to under get under her skin, get her arguing, get her super defensive, getting her advocating. So she looks a lot like a lawyer rather than a neutral expert. All right, so Alexandra, I want to get you to the question, but let's play the clip in question before we get there, uh, so then you can respond to this. Are there common myths? And sorry, I, this audio level's low, so all my guests, just be quiet. I'm going to mute my notifications. We'll have to turn this up. I couldn't get this boost in time, uh, but I, when I'm done the clip, I'll turn you guys back up. Or misperceptions uh, about domestic violence? There are. I, I hope I've dispelled some of them here already, but, I mean, the myths, you know, certainly are that women are, are meek, are passive, are you know just sitting there and letting the abuse happen that women don't fight back that women um, don't yell back that they some old ones that they like the violence they're not concerned about the violence that if it was really bad she really would have left um, if it was really bad she really would have told the police 
all of those myths and misconceptions um, that just don't comport with the research. Now, bro, to bring you guys back down. So, uh, Alexandra, it was very, I know, for a lot of triggering, as, as we're talking about abuse victims, she immediately always just went to woman, her, she. There was no, you know, abuse survivor type of lingo. It was very biased towards women and sort of try to help Amber in that regard. What were your thoughts when you heard that? I, you know, that was something I had in my head all the time. Like, if she would just remove the she, he, men, women, female, male, and she, if she would just remove that and speak, you know, that, let's say, I'm more broad through and not just scope, because she was scoping and just showing part of it. And she was, to me, very biased. So she was advocating for, obviously, for Amber, but she was advocating for female victims. And when, when asked about... Um, if male can be victims, she said, yes, yes, of course. And she kept the narrative like women and she even mentioned Amber. So, okay, so to this part, I was very, very disappointed at how she, she approached because she's just showing one part of the truth. Like what happens with, I don't know, with let's say um, sister, sister. You know, there, there is abuse between sister and sister, right? So we have two females. So when we're talking about domestic abuse, we should talk about abuser and victim, not male, female, or, you know. So that was the one that was really annoying me from the way she was talking. So maybe, I don't know if you have more parts so I can comment Yeah, we have some more. I, so let's go to the next clip. I just want to make sure what we... What documents did you review? Well, I'm so this was interesting. Uh, Chris, I want to get your thoughts on this too. There was a lot of uh, uh, reading of notes that the, the, the plaintiffs clearly jumped on to sort of point out she's reading too much. What documents did you review? Well, I'm going to refer to my list of documents. It is a four page you to approach. Dr. Curry, if you, I mean, Dr. Dr. Curry, Hughes, I don't know why. I Oi. Try to answer to the best of your ability. Just let us know you're consulting your notes, okay? Concern is that you're not read from them, okay? You can reference your notes, just don't read from them, okay? Yeah, no problem. Okay, okay, great. Please tell the jury who Dr. Bonnie Jacobs is. So Dr. Bonnie Jacobs was Ms. Hurd's therapist. May I refresh my recollection with my notes, Your Honor? She's, she's allowed to For consult the dates, notes. Yes, you may consult your notes, yes. Objection, Your Honor. I'm sorry, but Dr. So Clyde didn't consult any notes, so why should she? So that I don't forget anything. Eventually. <laughs> So I administered... Um, Objection, hearsay, Your Honor. You just can't read. You're not supposed to read from it, but you can refresh your recollection as you're speaking. Ten seconds later. What Ms. Hurd did to Mr. Depp. So it was asking about both sets of behavior. Um, and Objection, what Your Honor. <laughs> We're back to reading. She wasn't even looking. Uh, bravo, Mike. Great edit on that. Uh, there was, it just was, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, I don't know if that was really fair to be, let's, if I'm being, about, like, I get she has some notes. It's a long time, right? But it was very smart of the plaintiff because it made me realize, yeah, why is she keeping having to read all this? Because the other doctor didn't read it all. She was, you know, being the expert saying it all. But when she kept going back and they were making a point of showing that she kept going back, it started feeling like, is she reading a script? Uh, what, what is your take when you saw that, Christopher? Well, uh, look, she's a professional witness. She claims to have testified, you know, I don't know, all these times, but she was unprofessional in this example that the um, the witness is not supposed to rely or to refer to anything in writing when they're testifying unless they're given permission or they're saying that they're doing it because we don't know what they're reading. And um, she could have just given the report and put it into evidence and not have to go up there and testify if that's all she's going to be doing. So what I thought was it showed that she's inexperienced. as a, it, She doesn't have the experience uh, that she claims to have because she, this is a basic rule for a professional witness that you don't do that. We haven't seen other witnesses doing that. And she was very flippant uh, when she was scolded uh, not to do that. She was just like, what, is this like a memory test? What do you mean I can't look at my documents? So her, she has a really bad attitude. She's very full of herself. She, she got upset. You could see expressions in her face when she was interrupted. And that's why I think the cross can, 
can be very effective in undermining her and showing that she's here as an advocate, not as a neutral witness. Right, and so I want to get the rest of you guys because here's this clip was uh, put together, and thanks. This was for Jensen, right, uh, Kim? Jenkins, Jenkins. Jenkins, sorry, Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins did a fantastic edit of this. I'm gonna make sure I plug all the editors that have been stepping up. But here's uh, here's the hearsay counter. Many instances where um, Mr. Depp tried to control um, how Miss Heard went about her career. Um, he didn't want her to show. He didn't want her to show boob. He didn't want her to act with certain actors because of this obsessive jealousy. Um, he criticized her ambition. Um, he'd rather she not work. He called, you know, the ambition as something as a negative thing. Um, it made her very fearful to have to look at scripts or talk about scripts or talk about movie roles because he persistently put those down and told her she didn't need to work and she didn't need to do that and she didn't need to show her to us. Um, he didn't uh, necessarily support her work. The way this manifested as well is that he called almost every actor that she had to work with, um, males and females. So no matter what show she was filming or shooting, he would call the leading actor, he would call the director, he would tell you, I got eyes down there, I got eyes down on the set. Um, so she never felt safe to be herself and be a, an actress in these films or productions because she'd have to come home and then endure his anger at her for doing something or for not doing something. When she was filming and he was in the same town, she feared that he would show up on the set and, you know, to know what her call sheet, what she was filming that day. She, you know, even told her assistant, don't give it to him, don't let him see it so that he won't show up. And sometimes he did. Um, so it was very uh, trepidatious for her and very anxiety provoking that he continued to do this. He tried to control what she wore. When, he, when she was going out with him, things were fine, but he told her often, no woman like mine is gonna dress like a um, and didn't want her to wear revealing clothing um, and, or revealing clothing according to him. She recalled when she was going on a job audition and he said, you know, you're gonna go out with those you know, and she had to sort of go in and, and put on what she said, mom jeans, so that she didn't look sexy, so she didn't look revealing, and continue to try to plead with him about what jobs she could take and she could not take. This made her be very sort of restrictive and try to conceal things. She would hide her scripts because she couldn't read them in front of him because he would put them down or want to see where there might be nudity, where there might be something where she's doing a love scene. Almost every person that she was in a film with, there would be those barrages of the consistent accusations of infidelity. I love how she needs notes, but she remembers all these fucking details. Um, and we saw that on the Australia pictures, the Billy Bob. He was one person that he continued, you know, berate her about having an affair with. That's what obsessive control looks like. Those messages on the mirror. When you look at how he wanted her to um, be, there was some interference with, with the family, with her, with her sister. When, her, when some things were leaked, you know, he was obsessed believing that it was Whitney who did it. And eventually, Miss Heard had to succumb and say, okay, yes, it was, and then alienate herself from her sister because she just couldn't take the fights anymore. She just couldn't take the constant barrage of, of criticism. Um, so there were many instances when, um, in terms of their interactions, uh, she would have to text him right back. But when he would text, when she would text him, he could not answer for days. And it's this sort of when we talk about, you know, the ghosting, but you, your husband doesn't ghost you. I mean, there were so many times of this sort of withdrawal of affection, which was on his terms and when he wanted to do it. Um, I'm aware that there is, you know, testimony in this case that, you know, Mr. Depp decided to leave because he didn't want to be violent. And I do think that's true sometimes. I think he did leave in times where he didn't want an altercation. He did leave after an altercation. He did leave and then came back and continued the altercation. All right, so like there, there is so much more triggering moments, but that was just one they were able to pull before showtime. I'm trying to get some more clips. In fact, I, I've, someone in the notes room was able to get me. There was also an opening where she just detailed like the abuse by Johnny, and it was just so the irony was so thick of everything she was describing was exactly what Amber did to Johnny, not the other way around, based on all the things we've seen. But I, Christopher, and I'm going to come to you, Alexandra. Christopher, like what? How, how how is it we supposed to take this woman seriously? She's getting when 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 uh, you know uh, uh, what's her name? The other doctor who's way better. Uh, <laughs> I lost it. 
I lost her tweet. She was there in the court, and I lost the. Uh, Dr. Curry. There it is. Dr. Curry. Uh, I lost it. Dr. Curry was in. The, I had a picture of both of them. I can't seem to find it now. Dr. Curry was in the court as well, just sort of uh, taking it all in. Um, but Curry was. What was interesting about there she is. Uh, she will most likely be called. I imagine. I'm curious. Will she, will they bring her back since she was brought up so often? But she was. She had done a session with Amber for whatever it was. What 12, 20 hours. And she talked about Amber. She talked about Amber because she met Amber. Here we had this woman who was coming forward who met her, what was it, Kim? Three sessions, three or four sessions about? They had a few sessions in person and they had a couple on Zoom. And so suddenly now she's become an expert and knows all details as she's just spouting out all this hearsay from Amber. Like, is this an effective method, Christopher? Well, well, no. I mean, it's terrible for for the expert and hopefully for Amber's case. But I'm I'm surprised. Uh, I don't know, you know, what what they're doing in Virginia, but in in California, this would not be allowed on what's called direct examination of an expert. the The expert can't just you, you know repeating a lie doesn't make it true. So you you can't just take information what Amber says and then repeat it back and then all of a sudden it's truth. The, the expert, all she should be allowed to say is, I spoke to Amber, I looked at documents, and based on that information, I have an opinion about a psychological disorder or not. But for her to sit there and state as fact that all of these incidents occurred when she didn't witness any of them without even really qualifying it and saying, well, Johnny did this and that, um, I mean, she's not a fact witness, but she's presenting herself as such. So I'm surprised the judge allowed that in. But um, hey, it's out there, but that's not her area of expertise. We're, uh, psychologists are not experts on whether somebody's telling the truth, and they're not experts on whether an incident happened or not. They can just take into consideration information and render an opinion on whether somebody has a psychological disorder. So this is way outside the scope. And, and that'll be a big part, I'm sure, of the cross-examination. Now, I, we chose that clip on purpose, too, because she got into much more explicit detail, hence the warning at the start of the show. And I am going to mention a couple of them. So if you'd like to mute and don't want to hear some details. But it's, it's important for us to have this conversation because she went there. And this doctor, who Christopher even just backed up, said has no witness, nothing aside from four sessions where, I guess, Amber told her these things. And she's paid to be there as an expert on behalf. And we're going to get to the excuses and stuff through Alexander. But I, I showed you a, a smaller, minor thing of the complaints. But she proceeded to then go and talk about the abuse of punching, kicking, all this stuff. But where it got really disturbing was multiple instances of sexual assault, digital penetration, using a wine bottle, were broken wine bottles inside her vagina. Like it got, it went there. And it's like, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't, I, I was like, where is this coming from? And how is this being revealed now? And how, based on what? So she suddenly just told a random therapist and then suddenly no one like de declared physical abuse. As I've been researching, I hope someone can attest in the comments. I don't know if any of you can. I was told in the state of California, if there is like, a sign of abuse, like a doctor is required to call a, 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 you know, report it. And so I'm just confused how these sudden allegations of extreme sexual violence are being apparently confirmed in, in these sessions and not one was told to an authoritative figure. It kind of blows my mind. Do you, do you know, Christopher, in California, is that is that regular? Well, I mean, I mean, you, you would think that there would be other evidence of this. If, if I mean, these are some very serious incidents that would normally, you know, the police would be called or if she reported it to therapists that this would have gone and gotten elevated, um, not to the forensic. So, again, it, it's. Uh, you know, Amber can say whatever she wants to. When she gets up on the stand, she can say, you know, hey, this happened to me. Fine. But the, the beef that I have is, is that you can't just bring in an expert and have them read back the same statement that Amber made when this expert wasn't there, didn't see that. And so it's way outside the scope of it. It creates a lot of uh, confusion potentially for the jury to think, well, gee, I heard Dr. Hughes testified that Johnny did all these things. And it's like, well, you heard an expert repeating what she was told by Amber. So I, I am critical of the judge for allowing that in. Maybe that's a proper under rules of evidence in Virginia, but it should not be.
Uh, I want to go to you, Alexandra, because I know you're watching. And, and, and so as our psychologist, I want to get your insight because, you know, we had two conflicting psychologists. We have the war of the doctors happening now. Hughes versus uh, Curry. Where did you stand as you saw now Hughes reveal all this new, you know, shocking allegations? First of all, the, hu the first huge error she did is that she presented this as facts. She shouldn't because she doesn't know that she wasn't there. So, you know, my way of thinking, I have no idea about the law, how it works. But my way of thinking is that it will just take, you know, Johnny Depp's team to ask, like, how do you know this? Where do you know this from? Because Amber told me, uh-huh, okay. First thing. Secondly, the second question they could do, they could say is like, oh, is it is possible that all those symptoms that you just described could happen to, ma to a male victim? She has to say yes, right? And is it possible that a female perpetrator would do all those things that you just described? And she will have to say yes, because that's the truth, right? So then everything she just said proves how biased she is. So my first problem with her is that she's saying this in a way that these are facts. She's not even saying that from what I heard, I'm concerned, I believe, it seems. She's not saying that in that way even to protect herself, but she's claiming that this is true, which she doesn't know if it's the truth. She wasn't there. So that might, that's my first problem with her. The second problem I have with her is her attitude. You know, she, her, pers you know, as Christopher said before, she has this anger in her face. She looks like a man hater, you know, and she's assuming that this poor Amber suffered all this for sure from this awful monster just because she's a female, which that to me, it's also telling that, okay, from your expertise, it's possible. What documents did you be the other way around? So that's my problem with her as well. Well, I have a few problems with her, but those are the main. <laughs> you have a few problems. <laughs> I think we all had a few problems with her, but yeah, there was. I know. I I, I don't jump on it, but it did feel very. It did feel man hating. Like she was there to protect. Believe all women. The woman's telling the truth. Men can't be abused. There was a lot of that feeling throughout that. I do want to bring everybody in. And I, I know we have a lot of thoughts and stuff. Uh, but Steph and Kim, I want to get your thoughts, too. As you were watching this um, woman do all this, you, you were all reacting to as, as you know, uh, survivors, etc. Steph, I'll go to you as a survivor. Like, th th this was irritating you, the parts you watched, correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... We mentioned the bottle. Um, I'm not going to get too graphic, but let's put it this way. If that did happen, there would be damage. Internal damage. And she would have had to go to the hospital for that. Especially a broken one. Broken bottle. You cannot... There, there, there is no two ways about it where is her fucking damn evidence that fucking happened in the first place all we've got is this doctor turning around and saying amber told me this but hang on a minute if amber told you that where is the fucking evidence that, that happened in the first place you don't just say shit like that and say okay then this is fact in a court of law you've got to fucking back it up with evidence Otherwise, what's the freaking point when you're going in court of law? I can't go in a court of law against my uh, monster because what I'm saying is the truth in terms of what happened to me. But the fact of the matter is, because I know the reality of the situation, it's a he said, she said situation. It's as simple as that. I don't have any hard evidence to back up what happened to me. Where's her fucking hard evidence? Because she's in court right now and she's be she better bring it. For her to turn around and say something disgusting and horrible like that, but not then show the court that, hang on a minute, this actually did happen because here, here's the uh, doctor's note uh, that said, you know, here's the tearing of the wall and, and the insides and everything about that bottle. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh, there is so many problems with this woman and Amber Heard. It is untrue, but that's just one of them. And it's like, you, it, 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 oh... Seriously, there's a special place in hell for people that lie about being abuse victims. I swear on my fucking life there really, really is. Because this bullshit makes it harder for us real victims to actually get our justice in court against our damn monsters. I've said it once and I'll freaking say it again until I'm dead. I don't care. 
and it hurts and it hurts everything that she said fucking hurts and i hope i hope tomorrow when depth's team have their chance they freaking tear her apart tear her apart because like mr melcher said she has no business turning around and going into detail about situations that she wasn't even witness or party to in the freaking first place. Who the fuck is she to do that? Who the F is she? If I am someone on the stand turning around and telling my tr the, the, the truth about what happened to me, I'd be like, hang on a minute, shut the hell up. That is the truth that only I can say because you weren't there, but I was. All she can say, like Mr. Melcher says, is, look, you know, I assessed her, and in my opinion, here's a psychological uh, evaluation of what I think she's got, blah, 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 blah. And then she can bullshit out of her backside that way. Oh, there's so many f***ing problems. And that's just rant number one out of many, uh, potentially, for today's stream. So, guys, hold on to your butts, because I've got... Say, I love I'm you, Steph. Stop for now. You know we got your back, and we love you. And I'm plugging the hell of you. Love Steph too. Make sure you go follow her because she's so strong, she's so brave, she's so funny, she's such a good woman. Yeah. And we got your back. And I, I, I look, I hate to put you in that spot, but I wanted to hear from you because I think it's important. We got to stand up to this bullshit because what this woman did today was fucking bullshit. And I'm gonna be yeah. harsher with my explicit language this time because I was furious this whole fucking show. How dare you go up there and speak so fast? Actually, like, I understand you're a paid expert. You got a job. Okay, whatever. Everybody's got to, I guess, do what they got to do. But you spoke like you were fucking there. You weren't there. Every other doctor has had at least the decency to try to play a professional. And you were not professional, ma'am. And this, what you did today was abhorrent. How do you know Amber was telling the truth? You didn't take any care or caution whatsoever. You took a paycheck. You had clearly the, the fences back. You went there and you did this. And I was just floored because it is, how do you, how do we, a, a broken wine bottle and no one reported this or went to the authorities and it's just coming or out now doctor. in a doctor's testimony through a notes that no other doctor meant, thought maybe we should mention. Holy fuck, if Johnny Depp did that, speak up. <laughs> like everybody should have spoken up because then yeah you know what i wouldn't be saying justice for johnny i wouldn't be saying it then because oh my god that would be horrific but no one fucking said it except for amber and now this doctor lifted it up and gave her credibility and it infuriates me because real victims aren't going to be taken seriously now because of this fucking kangaroo court with elaine and rottenborn and all these fucking experts trying to defend this fucking monster i'll fucking say she's a fucking monster oh good i can't stand it uh so i'm with you steph i got your back i'm frustrated kim i, I want to i know we got a lot to get off our chest kim i want to give you a moment as well do you want to respond to what you were seeing here yeah um I just want to say right off the bat that I am someone that coming from my history, I want to believe people when they say that, that things like this have happened to them, because I hope that, you know, when I have the courage to say that something happened to me, that people would believe me. And I've also been in a situation where the possibility of what happened to me would have to be disclosed in litigation. And I had many conversations with my trauma therapist about that because I was, um, you know, n nobody wants that. You know what I mean? Like nobody wants the worst thing that's ever happened to them to be broadcast on public record and have people get to pick it apart and decide whether or not it was traumatic enough for you to be taken seriously. Um, and that's a really difficult thing to have to process. But all the conversations that I had with my psychologist were about how do we medically prove this? How can we show evidence that shows 100% fine? You don't necessarily have to believe the specifics of what she's telling you, but we're gonna be like, if it looks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And eventually, usually that is enough because it's so, how else could it even be possible? And the fact that she went off today with those types of claims and had nothing else to back it up when she said she did all these tests and all these things, I had so much more from my psychologist for a couple months of weekly therapy than what she showed today. And to me, that is just so 
horrible because I can tell you going through all those tests, having all that stuff done to you is not fun. It yeah. sucks. Yeah. And I'm sorry. We got you. We love you, Kim. I'll, 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 it's just, love, it's, love you, so, it's so ridiculous. And it's like, you guys got to understand when this stuff happens to you, like it doesn't leave. It never leaves my life every day. I have to deal with the scars of this. And even when I'm not awake, I have to deal with the scars of this. And seeing it shown this way is just such a disservice. And it's so disrespectful and so hurtful to people who have gone through this. And like I said, I want to believe Amber, but I look at this evidence and I don't see it. I don't see it. And that really hurts me to say that because I want to believe her, but I can't. And I'm sorry about that for her, but I, I don't, I have a lot of trouble believing her for that reason. And I hope that that makes sense. That's uh, my piece. Alexandra, I feel like maybe you can help uh, help us and, and, and these brave stories that just were shared. What, what are your thoughts, Alexandra? First of all, I think that guys, you are very brave here. First of all, I'm with you guys. Secondly, as a psychologist, if I, I, if I would ever be on stand in a position that this woman is, I will never speak those things, first of all, because I wasn't there, but secondly, because I would prefer the person that actually lived those things to say those things. You know, it's even it's far more powerful when the victim says the story and when the story is heard for the first time, the same way we could hear from Johnny's side for the first time. And if someone who randomly saw her for 20 something hours and wasn't her therapist was paid to evaluate something, clearly been biased because to me, this is very clear she is, but let's assume she's not. Okay, let's assume she's not biased, right? Let's assume that she truly honestly believes that this happened. If she believes this happened, she will know that the best thing would be to let Amber to say the story and not to say those things specifically with, with all the details. I can tell you, I have patients that are actually truly, really victims of sexual abuse, horrific stories, awful stories. And I don't know all the details. And every time I think about my patients, I will tear with them because you know, these stories touch you also. You know, because you, you have to have empathy. I understand that forensic psychologist might be different, okay? It's not the same as being a therapist. But when you say those stories, when you truly connect with your client, with your patient, and you feel what's going on, you you're not suffer. going to be understand accusing someone with such a huge anger and hatred, but you are going to try to advocate or speak for the person that you feel close to and even the tone of your voice is going to be different. You are going to try to make for the person, your, your client, the victim, you're going to try to make it easier for the person. How on earth she's going, let's say this happened. Let's hypothetically assume just for a second that all those things happened to Amber, right? If all those things happened to Amber, do you think this woman is helping her saying all those things things out loud in this tone of voice, in this way, with such an anger, with all these details, that will just trigger her. That's going to be another pain for her. So if you have any conscience, you will try to avoid all the, that pain to your client, right? Obviously, she's not the therapist. I know that. But even that, the way she's speaking sh shows that to me, this woman doesn't have empathy. Honestly, I doubt her empathy. You know, th this is how I perceive it. I might be wrong. I don't know this human, but you know, to me, this is why so much hunger? Where does it come from? That's that's all I can say right now. 
Hey, I do want to okay. play this. And I'm, I'm, first of all, bravo to all you ladies. You're, uh, you know, I love you. I got your back, and I'm so impressed. And you are so brave. And you know, we all got you. Uh, thank you for sharing and doing that. Anything you need, you know, we're here for you. Um, I, I do want to try and get through some of these clips because I, I not to get us more angry, but here is Amber's reaction, right? All this stuff that you're all getting angry about, we're all reacting. This was the, one of those moments where I saw Amber putting on the performance. And you know when it happened? Oh, when she had to talk about not being believed. She shared this story here. Let me turn the audio. When she shared, oh, she, you know, she wasn't being believed. At this moment is when Amber turned on the waterworks. She suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. She also has a high degree of coping strategies. But when this would happen, it sort of would just, everything would deteriorate. Um, and this is the, the one thing that women are always afraid of, that no one's going to believe them. No one's going to take them seriously. And when somebody comes out in, in the popular media and calls your experience a hoax, um, that lended itself to um, more severe psychological... Oh, she can go fuck herself. For her. Using all victims. Guys, come on, just believe me. Just believe me. How dare you not all believe me? I'm, I'm, I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. Uh... I, I just, it was despicable. There were a couple other moments here, uh, just really quick, and I want to get, Christopher, I don't know how much longer you have, but let me, uh, let me play these two quick ones, get your thoughts, welcome to stick around, but this was just, uh, Alexander too, she kept using a lot of terms, like try, these weird terms that I'm curious, are they even real? Uh, wh what was she calling it, Kim, the, the, I think I should say it here. But she only had one session with the couple, um, and it was her determination when they were both there and the violence was talked about, that Mr. Depp did not deny the violence that he um, perpetrated toward Ms. Hurd. Um, she also did, as everybody has, all of our other therapists, because Ms. Hurd admitted as such, that she also used low levels of violence as well. So okay, first of all, lie one, Johnny never admitted that in the testimony. We've gone through it. He just didn't say it, and it was never brought up in his presence. So she just literally lied about Johnny never denied it. Well, yeah, it was never brought up in front of him. It was brought up on one occasion, which the doctor confirmed that said Johnny wasn't there when Amber revealed it. So this again, she's caught trying to spin a narrative and lying. Um, and that was lie one. Hold on, there was a second one that she was saying there. I wanted to make sure I called out. That Mr. Depp did not deny the violence that he... Um, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Um, she also did, as everybody has, all of our other therapists, because Ms. Hurd admitted as such, that she also used low levels of violence as well. Oh, so there it is. So the excuse there is, she, Alexander, it's okay. Christopher, it's okay. She used low levels of violence as a response. What the fuck is this shit? I, is that like, so now it's like, oh yeah, she did. She did some stuff, guys. You may have heard some stuff. That was just low levels of violence in a response. Christopher, I, I want to go back to you since you haven't talked. Is that really, you think, a good defense here to try and have, well, the, have her try to justify what Amber's done? Yeah, I, I was listening to that, and that, that's that's evidence of bias when you minimize um, the conduct that we heard, which was in no way low level. I don't know how any violence is, is low level, but to minimize what Amber did and then to maximize what she thinks Johnny did is is clear evidence of, of bias, is confirmation bias. So it's it's terrible I, I mean agree with all these comments that this this is not doing amber any favors to bring on a witness like this and again it, it's like we're so far into this trial why don't you start your case amber with your strongest witness which i would think would be amber bring on amber and then at least we have like alexander's saying which makes perfect logical sense to say amber tell your story what happened to you and then bring on Hughes, in if, or, or legitimate, I should say, forensic psychologist to say, hey, I did some testing, I did some evaluation, and here, in my opinion, this person does not have a psychological disorder, or whatever the opinion is. Well, but that, at least that we've was heard the, plan, the right? That was the plan, they said, but then they made a, a, a ninth inning adjustment because I think they were so threatened by Curry and sort of swap, let's put the professional first to try and combat that, and then Amber will come on to add it further. So you're saying that was a mistake? I Well, I think that, that what they're trying to do is get the headlines, because unfortunately, the public reads headlines, and they don't often read the story. Mm. So we're already, I mean, I'm just going through my news feed, you know, Johnny hits Amber. I mean, there's, there's you know, you could get all these these headlines out there. And, and it's like the subtlety, the nuance then is, well, okay, yeah, that was said in court, but 
it was just a repetition by a paid expert of what Amber told the expert. So I think that they're doing that. This is this is the PR team in full work. And this so is perfect this is the pivot team. because we have two clips of here. The bald guy is the new PR guy going and meeting the court photographer during the trial while it's in session, going over, shaking hands and saying hello to the new court photographer, uh, which it's like, w -w huh? And then you have the officers coming and engaging with him. Uh, well, I guess he was on his phone at one point, hamming it up. Uh, but here he is in full gear, uh, front seat. Trying to make it very clear. So you're I, well said. I, I didn't really think about that, but that's why, right? They wanted to put something in before Amber's testimony to get yeah. some headlines to do this. The, it, it seems clear the lawyers are working with the PR more than anything to try and get the, the Amber's probably in the back saying, look, fuck the case at this point. Fix this PR problem, lawyers. Here's my new guy. Is Can that be something that happens, Christopher, where she's sort of now making demands to her own lawyers saying we got to adjust because the PR is so bad? Well, that's it. I mean, obviously, she's she's concerned about her image, which she rightly you know should be. And that's why she changed out the PR team. That's probably why they brought on this expert. They're laying it on thick, getting all the information out there so they can grab some headlines and avoid Amber having to face cross-examination to testify and seeing when she falls apart. So I think that that's what's that's unfortunately what's happening and look, I mean, any public trial like this that's that's so publicized, each side's going to play to the press and to public opinion. And I, I think that's what we're seeing. But this in no way advances her case. And you would have to be a fool to hear that testimony and say, oh, all those things must have happened because there's a psychologist who said it happened. Right. I mean, it, it, there, there's no she did not observe it occurring, so she should not be testifying to it and in no way proves that it happened. The cross is going to go there. I saw hands up. Alexandra and Ste yeah. Oh, yeah, Alexandra and yeah, Steph. I, probably Steph may be the same. There's a third video. Uh, ah, I'm working the, on it. Yeah. The third video, uh, this lady with silver hair from Tim uh, Amber um, from Amber team approaching this David guy, actually, and passing notes. So they're- Oh, oh no, yeah. I've got some else. Oh, oh mine's yeah, different. Right. You're right, mine's I, different. I saw that, that's what I lost, I needed. Do you have the link to that? It's in, uh, I sent it on uh, Telegram. Okay, I'm looking for it now. Yeah, yeah, Christopher, is that allowed? There, We have it here, there, she did. The, the Someone from the legal team passed a note to the new PR guy during the trial. How is that allowed? Is that part of the team now? They can just do that? I guess there's no... Well, I mean, he's not, not a witness. So it's not, not, there's nothing questionable there. There's nothing they can get him <clears throat> so, for. I mean, you know, look, I mean, it's, it's, they're, I don't, uh, they're, the PR team is not part of the legal team. And, and we've gotten into this in California where, like, we have subpoenaed um, PR reps to testify as to what they talk to the lawyers about or, or the party about because there's no... There's an attorney client privilege. There's no PR client privilege. So, you know, they could potentially call this person to the stand and saying, what what did Amber tell you? And what did you talk to the Amber's lawyers about? Uh, here it is. OK, we did find it on I found it on Twitter. This is a clip. Uh, there's one of Amber's people passing a note to uh, Baldy. Hold on, I can lower this down for you guys to so see it. And I have another question for you, Christopher, because, OK, uh, Amber said, well, what, 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 they, what was reported is that Amber fired her PR team because she's not happy with the headlines, right? So that means that she's reading things. Isn't she supposed not to read things during the trial? Well, she's allowed to, right? I, I don't know what, what that, you know, the extent of that order. I've heard comments about that. Um, you know, and again, we, we don't know when when there's press reports about this, you know, how accurate they are. Um, but I would like to see that order if, um, if anybody has it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, hey, look, I mean, she can she can do her PR damage control just like Jan Johnny can. Um, and what we're what I'm more concerned about is what's going on in court. And it was very bad. Uh, yeah. So was there another moment or was that the, did I get that all that? That was the one you were talking about, Steph. Is that what you were going to add to this? No, there's no. another one. 
Oh, <laughs> there's another I got one. Some <laughs> different. I got, I got some. Well, all before you get, as you get me that too, I do. I, I, now that we have a, a nice I've, break, I've, I've got, I've got your timestamps right here, mate. Oh, good. Well, as I say, well, but while you're doing oh, that, I, I just want to plug one more time our sponsor today, Coffee Brand Coffee. Thanks again for supporting this mm. stream and letting us be real, talk honestly without any bullshit. A sponsor that doesn't care what we talk about. Holy shit, I support that. So make sure you go support some quality coffee with no gimmicks. Uh, I, I never can get a sponsor to allow us to do a topic this serious and this real. And they're just a, a nice, straight, normal coffee company that wants to get all the bullshit and all the politics out of corporations. So just go buy some nice, fresh roasted, fresh roasted to order coffee. I think you got to use co code popcorned. Uh, or use my affiliate link, which is in the description. You should be able to get, I think, 5% off a single bag order. So do us a favor. Support our first sponsor. We'd love to Amazing. get some more. And go check out Coffee Brand Coffee. And thanks to them for supporting us, believing in us, and letting us talk without without any worry about what we're fucking talking about. Supporting creators and supporting the roasters to give you the freshest coffee made to order. Uh, give them a shot and let us know what you think. Uh, Steph, all right, back to you. You had something you were going to bring up. I've sent you a Twitter link. Also, as well, go to Cactus Stream and go to time frame, 6 hour, 25 minutes, 17 seconds. 6 hour, hold on one second, 25 minutes. Yeah, and 17 uh, seconds. It's a little slow. slow it's to towards the end -ish. <coughs> Hold on. Still processing. Those 6 hour streams get harder to find. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, it's after it's finished and the camera is zooming in. 6 hour... Uh, oh, 25 so minutes. So near the end. Okay. And 17 seconds. Yes. Six hours. Here we go, guys. Sorry, bear with me as we try to find this. Okay. Now, there's going to be, in a moment, a zoom in between PR Baldy Guy, who I believe, is it Shane? Oh, here it and is. And this red hair, red shirted girl. Alas, uh, in a red shirt. Yeah. In a red dress. Now, that's going to zoom in in a moment. So you get to see a little bit more of a close-up. Here it comes. Of who this lass is. So, so there you go. There's your close-up. Okay. Now, who is Yeah, how did she, she? get a close-up, right? How, well, this is yeah. so strange. Who, did who, he pay who, off who, the camera who guys? Who is this lass? Who is this lass, right, that's talking to... Amber's PR guy that's been all chummy chumming with her. I have not seen them zoom in on her. anybody, Steph. That's such a weird thing. Do we know weird who that thing, woman is? Right? Go on to her Twitter. Because guess what? I'd be very skeptical of court TV right now. Uh... I would be very, very skeptical. Because uh... guess who she is? Scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. Just scroll down. Scroll down a little bit more. No, 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 scroll down a little bit more. Right. There you go. Oh, I wonder if how she's getting, how she get that access. How did she get that access? <laughs> Why is she sitting next to Shane, PR, baldy guy, whoever his name is? Why is she being all pally pally and talking to him? Guys, just I don't know about just, you. Hey, you didn't think uh, Jane, she was having a male acquaintance affair, so you're, this is a stretch too. But it is a little questionable. He's getting pally pally with everybody. Uh, and yeah, Court TV... Managed to get that. Was this their feed? No, we weren't even on their feed. No, no, we 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 were on the uh, proper legitimate feed. Yeah, it's like turning it. into a Hollywood uh, production. They're like saving the first row for PR people and the hosts. Can I get a Can I get a seat, Christopher, on this now? Can you and I go and get get quicker access to the front row like these guys do? Does that seem strange to you, or do you think they waited in line at six a.m. like everybody else? Yeah, look, I I, I don't know, you, you know how they're divvying up. Uh, court seat. I mean, uh, courtroom seats. Uh, I, you know, and I do guest on court TV, and I, I, I think that uh, at least the the shows that I've been on with uh, Vinnie Politon have been have been very balanced. Uh, so you don't see I, any I hanky. Don't you know, there's nothing suspicious to you here. This is just two people well, sitting next to each other. Well, look. I mean, you know, you're you're sitting next to somebody. You, you you're going to talk to them. I mean, I don't. You know. He's not know. he's no dummy. I mean, I'll be honest, that's a smart move for a PR guy to get in tight with the court TV reporters because they're the ones well, doing course. the fucking feed. Yeah, of course. 
So hate it all you but, want, but, but yeah. I, but ultimately, and I've I've seen her reporting, and it's been factual. You like her? So, okay. I mean, it's I, it's very familiar. interesting to to point you know to point all that out, and we should be suspicious and looking at everything. But I I haven't seen. I mean, her reporting is always factual. Okay, good. So she's what hearing, I've seen. Well, good, and maybe she's a spy, Steph. Maybe she'll get in with this PR guy, and get, maybe she's working for us. We can have faith, right? Let's go, Shanley. Maybe, but uh, but but this is why I say. Just be a little bit more skeptical skeptical about court TV from this point onwards, in my opinion, because this PR guy is being drafted in to try and change public opinion. And the way they, they start that, I assume, is with the media themselves. So if court TV starts to hint Amber in a more favorable light and show bias a positive bias towards Amber rather than a neutral stance that Mr. Well, Melcher has been saying, then we can look back at this moment and think, uh, okay, I mean, I've seen, that's how shit is going down. I've seen bias on court TV and it all depends on the, the person who comes on. They've had some people come on who are just very anti Johnny or just ignorant to the case. So I, I just haven't watched because I didn't like some of those, those, the correspondence they chose, but I'll give her the benefit of the doubt if, uh, and some are saying in the chat that she is fair. So we'll give you the benefit of the doubt for now, but yes, Steph's right. Let's keep our eyes. Did you have something to add? Alexandra? To what Kim? I say time will tell. Either yeah. Way. Well, time will tell. Time will good, tell. good catch. Did you have your hand up Alexander? Did you want to say something? You're muted. Sorry. Uh, there no, we go. I was just saying that, well, let's, let's check when she entered because I believe she wasn't there before. We'll have to look on that. I have one more clip I was going to play you, which was this response to the mutual abuse. So Dr. Anderson similarly thought that there was violence and abuse in this relationship. She was the one therapist out of the four who qualified it as mutual abuse. Um, which, one out of four, so therefore it must be true. Which, um, the termination I've talked to you about, I, I don't necessarily agree with. Um, but she did see and did understand that there was violence and abuse by Mr. Depp. Mutual. So she, she agrees that Amber did low levels of violence, but not mutual abuse. Oh, okay. She's not biased. <clears throat> what was most notable was that after the December 15th, 2015 episode, Ms. Heard called her in addition to calling Connell Cohen and reached out to a number of people. But she saw Dr. Anderson in her office. And Dr. Anderson saw two bruises on her face and told me, my husband kicked me and he pushed me and he punched me in the head. And should I call the police? Objection, Your Honor. What should you're I saying. do? She's not reading, Your Honor. She's just saying this. She's not reading. Objection. So therefore, it's not your thing. <laughs> Right. How the fuck excuse was that from Elaine? Well, she's not reading, so it shouldn't be hearsay. I mean, this was she start not only sharing Amber stuff, Christopher. She starts talking about what other people were saying to Amber that were then other people that were saying to Amber, and then finally they spoke up. And I guess that that's that's too too many steps too far. Yes. Y yeah, and I, I like I said, I wish there would have been a lot tighter control over that um, by the court. Uh, you know, I, I, I like the judge, but again, it, th this is, and I think going back to what Steph and Kim, you know, and Alexander were talking about earlier, this is really a fraud on the system, and and it's it's something that really has upset me uh, greatly as a as a trial attorney when you have an expert come in there and go way beyond the scope of their expertise, and then start giving all of this crap to the jury that now you have to debunk later on. And it would be a lot more efficient if the court had restricted her testimony um, to the proper scope of her expertise. And, and there's, there's no reason for this expert to go out there and just start parroting statements that she had read or been told. She should only be allowed to say, I, can, I took a lot of information in, I considered it, and here is my opinion. And then on cross, they can go into the specifics if they want to. But direct, that's, that should not have been permitted. Um, yeah, she, there's one little bit here. Let me make sure I finish the clip. Sorry. What were your, uh, what conclusions did you make as a result of Dr., what you reviewed for Dr. Laurel Anderson? My take of reading Dr. Laurel Anderson's deposition and seeing her, you know, redacted notes was that, you know, from my professional opinion, this was a very serious incident and a very serious 
um, allegation of intimate partner violence by Mr. Depp. If a patient comes into my office with two bruises and alleges being pushed, shoved, and kicked by her partner, I'm going to be very concerned and I'm going to mobilize a lot more resources to help that individual. Um, and for some reason, um, that did not happen for Ms. Heard. So, Alexander, what are your thoughts on that when she's calling out Laurel? I would, and Anne should come on as well, because she really broke down that whole piece. I'll try and get her at some point to give us her thoughts. But what do you think of her trying to discredit uh, Laurel Anderson there? First of all, uh, we heard the Dr. Lauren uh, testimony, and she didn't say those things. Unless my memory is fading now. She said that she didn't see her. She saw pictures, right? And then that she did so see some little bit marks or something, but she didn't mention all those things that she is talking about here. Now, trying to discredit everyone around, well, this is basically the tactic. Um, Amber uh, team had all the time, like their tactic is, first of all, um, to, you know, every witness that appears just to, you know, like minimize how reliable they are. The second thing is just to repeat and repeat and repeat things to gaslight everyone and make it, maybe you will believe it eventually, right? So uh, what can I say here? She's basically saying that is Dr. Lauren fault that she didn't take care of her patient and it's her fault she didn't believe that this was true. This is what she's implying here. Uh, yeah, it, uh, Steph or Kim, any, either of you have a thought on that, on her sort of discrediting these doctors? Um, this doctor can go fuck herself. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Melcher, that I'm this way, but it, 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 I, 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 I can't be anyone else but me uh, when discussing uh, this topic and... Um, yeah, she 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 could go do one. Uh, never mind, but she can go find nearest cactus and anyone that saw Gene or the rest of that one. Um, yeah, this 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 is insane. This is insane. And Amber Amber Heard's reaction to all of this, guys. I mean, I don't mean any. What is it? But you've just seen myself and Kim right, kind of like talk about you know what happened to us and the truth and everything and. You know, I have, you know, tears in my eyes and, you know, my, my eye contact's everywhere at the moment. And, uh, you know, it, the, the, there's, 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 there's an emotion and it's all there. But Amber, I'm sorry, but it's like she's, there, there she is. She's like... <laughs> I'm that sorry, means. but when someone is talking about the, the abuse that I went through, the truth of the fucking matter, I'm sorry. Yeah. But I'm it's not like I'm putting it on, but it's just this innate, em raw, emotion, animal inside of me that just comes out, and I just, that's it. There's tears. That, that, that's happening fucking right now. There's tears. That my, my, my voice, it, it just... There's, 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 there's more to my body language than my eyes, the way I am, the way I'm probably contorting my face right now that's probably not flattering, but screw it. This is what you've got tonight, guys. Um, there's a lot more instead of just... I, 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 don't, I don't get it. I don't get a reaction. If this is actually true and these horrific things happen to her, I'm sorry, but as part of the survivorship community, it's, there's more than that. There's more than that that comes out. I tell you that right now. No matter how good of an actress you can claim to be. And she's not. When something like, exactly, when something <laughs> like that happens, there's a visceral thing inside it. You can't can stop it, guys. Tears come out. Everything comes out. You cannot stop it. You can't. And she's just there being like, hmm. Well, I think I can do it, right? I'm going to try it. Andy, <laughs> let's do an experiment. <laughs> See, I just us. did it. I can do it too. I, I can, we can all do yeah. it. Go ahead, Alexandra. Let's do an experiment. Yes. Can you put like her face when she's yes. allegedly sad? There she is. Yep, we got the, the sad face. Let's just do an experiment. Okay. To what? Just 
when she's yeah there yeah. okay we have sad okay. face so let's do an experiment everyone who is watching just cover her her part like this and just put this part here like cover her eyes yeah okay okay, okay. <clears throat> what do you see a frown do you see sadness in her lip what do you see I, I I see I see tension as in like um and an, an, like an, an, an like a secret anger inside of her. That's not a frown. Like sadness is it, the, the 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 mouth is more looser. It's more relaxed. It does um, feel forced. It's more there's 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 more contortion to it. It goes all over the place. This is very restrained. This is very um uh, 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 taut very taut in her, her her garb that's not that's not sadness that's, right, well, that's like anger now let's cover the lower part and let's look just at the eyes what do you see she's rolling her eyes <laughs> kind of she looks more like disgust yeah she doesn't look yeah. bad yeah well she looks like she's when putting on a performance when you are in both triggered, ways when you are triggered she doesn't have you know, like just what, what Steph just said, when you both girls were talking, we could hear, we could sense, I was already feeling your emotions, you could feel the pain, and you, we could see what was happening with your eyes. She doesn't have the sadness, she's not triggered, she's faking it. She has disgust and she's trying to force sadness. It's not yeah. consistent in, in her face. I don't buy, buy it at all. It'll be so fascinating when she does go on the stand, though, and she has to give this performance because at this point she's they lost to... her appeal. She's gonna have to, Christopher. Like that's the next step. They gotta put her. The, after today, they can't wait any longer, right? Once the cross happens, we can all predict Amber is gonna be next up on the stand, and then she's gonna have to corroborate and now back up all the things that this doctor said. Correct? Yeah, I mean, they may we waiting for Thursday because, <clears throat> you know, if if they time it right, they can end her testimony um, on direct without having time for cross and then have all that other time because right, they're off the ninth, yeah. the week of the ninth. So if they're smart, they would, they would finish Thursday afternoon um, running out of time for any cross examination and let all that testimony go for essentially 10 days unchallenged in the press. Oof, God, don't give him that idea, Christopher. Why is Christopher always giving these good ideas? Sorry, idea. cut, cut, that to cut, cut that part out. Uh, but I, my know. God, that's why I love him on they the show. They already know, guys, though. Right. They talked know. about that. Of course they He's talked about that. He's fucking right. That's know. exactly what they're going to do, as they should. And if they don't, then they're just, again, proving how fucking stupid they are. Because you're right. Throw another witness on. Delay a little bit if you got to. Start it. And at least start it. And don't even, if you don't finish it, so be it. But you're right. Start it so you're ending that whole long break with Amber telling these horror stories without any cross. But I mean, that sucks from a PR standpoint. But I don't know. I don't. I don't think she's gonna get the PR she thinks she is. I think I. I don't. I. I'll. I will eat my words if I'm wrong. But I just think she's gonna. I mean, right now this doctor's blowing up in her face. She's not getting good, you know, feedback from it at all. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see if she actually can pull off any, you know, people feeling bad for her because it's going to be the most telling part of this now that we've seen Johnny tell his side to hear now Amber try to justify and, and tell her side. It really does become the he said, she said, and obviously the most of the world is now supporting Johnny after all they've seen and learned. But will that change when Amber is able to speak? I, I don't see how it's possible, but I, I, I'm so on the edge of my seat as this show goes. Honestly, I feel like the judge and everybody, they're just producing this show. It's starting to feel like a Netflix series on just how crazy <laughs> the ups and downs are with today's you know just, uh, thing that came out. Or were we, what are they going to throw the whole case out? Oh, no, just kidding. Stay tuned for episode five. It's just blowing my mind. Everyone is engrossed on this show live watching it together uh and and it does feel like both amber team and johnny's team know it and really that's probably more important to them than anything else in this right guys because this is really a pr battle at the end of the day that's more important of who's going to have the credibility as amber even was ca caught on t on audio i you know i you know I, i've lost all credibility i can't no one's going to believe me again and Johnny's telling her, well, then why'd you do this? They've both, you know, it's, it's, it's out there. She's committed. And now he's committed to just expose it all because he's got to save his name. And that's where we are. So this, this TV show is not ending. Sadly, it's real and it's sad, but it also is 
you know, it is a TV show that we're all consuming. Uh, I want to take some more thoughts, get some more questions, but I know we've been going long, and I want to give our guests a chance to dip out. Uh, let's do one little quick round. Christopher, uh, final thoughts on, on today's day and what's to come? Well, you know, this is the start of her case. So, uh, you know, I I'm, I'm, don't want to judge the case until I've heard all the evidence. We've only heard Johnny's and a little bit of hers. So, you know, just in fairness, uh, you know, this is her opportunity to, to put on her case the best that she can with her witnesses. I think it was a bad start. I think her witness was totally biased and hurt her case. But again, I'm probably biased here based on what I'm already concluding from the evidence that I've heard. Uh, uh, let's see, Alexandra, uh, final thoughts on this day? or we'll, we'll talk some more, but just thoughts you want to add before I clip this? Yes, if you are a psychotherapist, psychologist, and you are on the stand, talk about facts, not what you think that might be a fact. Because, you know, if you are supposed to talk about I don't know, domestic violence, then talk about symptoms, talk about things that are factual that you can prove. Otherwise, you are just, you know, destroying your own cred credibility. And I don't like that. We actually just had a special guest drop in our, our Zoom. I'm very honored who was there, who's been there this whole time. The real Lara B. Are you there, Lara? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Welcome to the show. Okay. I just I, I'm, I, I was about to clip Great. it, but you seem to have something you wanted to say. So get it on. I quick do. I really I really perked up in the, in the courtroom when she started reading out the first date she met with Amber, September 2019. What was going on? Well, I'll tell you, she did not want to testify for NGN. They somehow got her committed to do that. And what does she do? It was all about the WB. But she, for some reason, as a witness, had to bring in the essay claims. She didn't have to. It had nothing to do with the case. So here she is suddenly, out of the blue, meeting with this expert. I mean, was that to prime her to know what to claim? Is that my skepticism? Because why so early to be talking with this expert right before the NGN trial? Yeah, sorry, so the NGN trial is the one with, like, with Wooten in the U.K.? Right. And that was for a WB. That wasn't for SA. That was for the WB word. Sorry, we can say. say it now. We've we've demonetized. It's not the wife beater case. It's now the sexual assault allegation case. But in the NGN, it was the wife beater case. So why did she feel the need to have to go public with these SA claims? And that's part of what this psychologist is saying. You don't want to tell anybody. But she did. She wanted that trial sealed to the public, to the press because she wanted to come out with these essay claims. So what did she do? She meets with this expert psychologist just months before. Amber wanted that sealed in that case, didn't want it out, wanted to save it for this case, it sounds like, to then reveal it no, in this. You think? I, like she didn't want her uh, anything public about her testimony. She wanted it all kept private. She wanted to rely on the media. Amber. Amber wanted it private. Yeah, Amber. Yeah, Amber wanted it private. So she tried to get the case sealed in the, in, in the UK, and the judge said, no, we're just going to give you your 15 minutes of your essay. We're not going to seal the case. But I just found it interesting that she came up with these essay claims right before the NGH, NGN trial. She's never claimed them before. And it was right after meeting with this doctor. Interesting. I see what you're saying. So, so the doctor, that's yeah. where the date came in. Sorry, I was just trying, trying to follow because Laura knows, goes deep on these. You're saying when they met the doctor, it was right before this, and that's where this claim suddenly came out of thin air was while yeah. meeting with this doctor. Yeah, and that's why Adam made that statement. Suddenly she wants to make these public essay claim. She wants to make them public that she's claiming them. But she doesn't want her testimony public. It was a double-edged sword. Well, and the other issue is, Christopher, well, before I let you go, too, because it's interesting, it's a contradiction here, right? Because when, when they were fighting the um, entire, you know, drop this case, right, guys? Rottenborn was like, well, the essay claim wasn't written by her. Yeah. It was written by the Washington Post, so we're not blah, 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 blah. So they almost they were sort of denying, well, it doesn't even matter, guys, because Amber's not taking credit for that. But now the witness comes and says, well, no, there was SV, you know, that was a thing. Do you think that could cause some some disconnect now in their story or narrative that now they got to defend? Well, no, there was a wine bottle. Now it's all out there. We got to talk about yep. it. That's a great point, Andy. I know that you and I were going through the statement, and this was maybe even before the trial started, and and looking at it, and and you know, and I was kind of being devil's advocate and and commenting on that essay portion of it, and 
I was saying, well, you know, maybe she's talking about childhood abuse. And, you know, because, you know, so how can we, you know, because she did say she had experienced abuse at, at, you know, kind of before college age. So was she really referring to something that happened to her during her marriage with Johnny? And um, but now that she's making that S.A. claim, um, you know, she may have really stepped into it and now really elevated the seriousness of of the defamatory statement. Well, again, and now well, that he, means stay tuned for the next episode because is she going to really double this down and start now go on trial and start cl- What do you think, Laura? I'll give you the last word. Oh, she, is she going to go on claim gonna, and just cry about the wine bottle incidents and try to make this oh, headlines everywhere? Yes, she's going to go for the shock and awe. She wants to shock the jury just like she did with um, Knuckles and, and NGA. Like you, you, I, I have to be telling the truth. Nobody would be this shocking if they weren't. But part two of this is a pattern of behavior. In the pretrial conference on, uh, it was a WebEx call, which was open. And this was all supposed to be kept confidential. Elaine was fighting against the live stream. She says, no, my client's been armed. You can't live stream this, which is exactly the f- argument she was making in the UK. Suddenly, this uh, essay is coming out now here in the US because she didn't want it live streamed. But now it's live streamed, she's letting it out. Why? Well, because she wants to win at any cost. Uh, uh, That's my, my opinion. God. That's my humble opinion. That's exactly what she did in the UK. Exactly. Shocked well, and, them so much that they couldn't possibly think otherwise. Just shock them. And, and the other thing is what we, you know, we saw in Brittany's case where, where we didn't have the ability to get real-time access to info, uh, at least not easily, it, you know, claims could be made and then it's after the court hearing, people trying to figure out secondhand. I was in the courtroom. This is what happened. It was very difficult for the flow of information and for people to judge or understand what's going on here. I mean, we're getting the information. We're seeing it live. And and that really can help expose, hopefully, the truth. Hopefully, yes, please. Because she made a lot of contradictions with this therapist, uh, the forensic psychologist. You know, talking about that pool party after the, the airplane trip. No, the pool party was after the detox when Johnny made her leave and he couldn't finish detox with her. That's when he sent them to the pool party at the Marmont. Um, yeah. She did not get knocked down on the plane in Boston. There were witnesses that she never got pushed forward or knocked down or another claim that he threw a boot in her back. She's got so many different stories. Um, she did not lose consciousness, depending on who you listen to, December 15th from the court in, because Rocky testified that Amber called her or texted her or something for her to come over and check out her well-being right yeah there was so many inconsistencies and just hearsay that's like i guess christopher they're gonna have to challenge all this in the cross this is going to be a long cross i imagine well that that's the problem i mean like when you had that that great uh clip about the hearsay counter you know there was whatever like 40 different stories and like how do you as a trial attorney go through and then call the witnesses for each one Remind the jury that this claim was made. Here's the witness that said, no, that didn't happen. I mean, the trial will never end. Um, but it's just it's just this shotgun approach, though, that, that hopefully the jury would say, like, wow, it, it seems like when you're trying to pin her down, then then all these other claims come out. And that's hopefully uh, the jury would assess that in credibility. One would hope. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching the show. If you missed the full show, man, we got so many support comments and so much more that we talked about with Alexandra, Kim, and Steph. Make sure you support them at Steph the Alternerd on YouTube. Make sure you also subscribe to It's Kim, one word, no apostrophe, on YouTube. Give them some love, please. Thanks again to Christopher Melcher and Alexandra. Also, I got to thank my sponsor this week, Coffee brand coffee. My gosh, so cool to have someone stand up for this show, a show that was demonetized by YouTube. They came in, they were like, you know what? This is an important topic. We want to support you. And they are a quality coffee with no gimmicks. They don't care about politics. They're apolitical. And they do it fresh, roasted to order to your do- to your door. Simply great coffee. No other bullshit. You don't got to worry about what politics they're going to go off and piss you off about. You just get the best coffee straight from the people who make you the coffee. And they do it, uh, roast it to order. Uh, so please just check them out. Go support it. Uh, 
uh, really grateful to Jeremy over there for sticking up and helping me and other creators out there. Uh, it would mean a lot if you like if a coffee good person, give it a try. Check it out. Make sure you use our affiliation code in the description. It has popcorn planet in it. Use code popcorn. I think it's for five percent off a single order, uh, so you'll get a nice discount as well, and you'll be helping our channel uh, make sure we get our sponsors happy. So thanks to coffee, Sim uh, coffee brand coffee. You're incredible. I appreciate your support, and also I know a lot of you have been like Andy. Where do I get the shirt? You can get it at our merch store. Uh, no sis knows. That's also in the description. You can get our Justice for Johnny shirts and more. So thanks as well for that. Uh, you guys are incredible. Make sure if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell as well, or the join if you really want to support. And we will be back tomorrow after day 14. Oh my God, it'll be so many days. But we got your back. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great night, Bye. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Laters. Ouch. Couch. 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 Couch.